Well, there's a reason people like best-selling author Max Lucado and motivational speaker Tony Robbins are humbled by the efforts of John Bentley. Harmony Outreach is more than an orphanage. It's focused on the physical, spiritual, and emotional growth of the child, while also dedicated to finding a home for every child that graces their doors, something today's guest knows as well. So tell us about that burned baby left in the field. Yeah. What happened to him and how did you come to know about well, him? Well, what happened was um, Lisa came to China dragging her feet, you know. She really wasn't sure about this at all. And so I, I told her, just come on a three-month vision tour and let God show you at the end of that time. If you're not convinced that we're supposed to be in China, you can veto it and we'll go back and I'll resume the practice of law. So we um, were out in China and it was the death of one of our orphans who was very sickly. He died in the hospital that really impacted Lisa. So she prayed and said, um, God, I know you want me to be here in China, but I don't have a heart for the Chinese people. Would you please give me a heart for China? And after she prayed that, about a week later is when we were contacted by some Chinese orphanage officials and they said the police have just dropped off this baby who's been severely burned. He's only one month old and do you want him? If you don't, he's going to die and that's okay. And uh, we said, yeah, we'll absolutely take him. So, no, we, Do you know how he had been burned? We don't know. Um, it, we it's, suspect it was an accident because there was indications on his body that they had tried to give him crude village medical treatment. Um, so w it was probably an accident. Probably an accident because baby boys are, I guess, more sought after in China than they are, baby girls. They are, and China's, you know, not a OSHA approved country. It's just not safe, you know, and many things they do. So they heat with oil and it, it's just very easy for people to get injured. To have accidents. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you all went to pick him up, so you're saying that how much of his body was burned? Was um, his face burned? Just his yeah, body? Yeah, if you see pictures of Levi now, you'll see um, scarring on his face. He's really cute, but the left side of his body in particular was really damaged. He only has an arm to about here, uh, no toes on this foot, and he lost most of the fingers on this hand, but the doctors have rebuilt three finger, half fingers and a thumb. Wow, and so can he use? Oh, and then so he can use that hand, I guess. Yes, somewhere. in fact, um, Levi is the most skilled of all of our children at using chopsticks. Oh, and so, of all of our is. kids, yeah, nothing holds him back. He's on the soccer team at his school, and he's just full of life. What did you think when you saw him? I mean, a month old with that many injuries and that and burn victims. I mean, Dave Reaver's a good friend of ours, and others. It that's a devastating injury. Well, you, you, I have to go back in time, in the time frame back then. I had no idea that it was God's plan for him to be my son and our child at that point. And so I was thinking, you know, are we taking off, biting off more than we can chew in this case? I mean, we are basically poor mi missionaries and we're taking on a child with very severe injuries. And you already have four children. We had four children, exactly. And as I mentioned, very little support. Um, but God uh, really did it through my wife, Lisa, not me. Lisa went down there the next day and saw him at the hospital, and it was a case of love at first sight. And almost from the moment she saw him, uh, she fell in love with him and said, that's my son. And oh, wow. so it was really Lisa that sort of drew us into that. So but God gave her her heart for China through Levi. Wow. So you adopted Levi yes. as your son, and then another little special bundle came along. Yeah. You're, now you have five kids. Right. <laughs> it yeah. could be dangerous to go to China. Exactly. You could end up with a really extended family there. But what? Tell us about the the last little bundle of joy. Well, Orly um, is our daughter that we adopted. She was found abandoned in the Tianjin train station because she was born with spina bifida. Oh. And um, so, when I first went to China, it was Valentine's Day, and Lisa said, "What do you want for Valentine's Day?" And I said, "You know what? I really want. I really would like for us to take Orly in." And, uh, but we just kind of backed off at that moment because um, there was another family that was supposed to adopt her. Well, a whole year went by, and when it came time for that family to get her, the Chinese government said, no, you can't have her. And that was the third failed adoption attempt for Orly. So she had attachment disorder syndrome. And, uh, which, is, which is really hard on babies to not have a family that they're... It's amazing with. how their emotion and psyche are impacted by this feeling of rejection. 
And so um, Stephen Curtis Chapman, the musician, came to China, and he was at our orphanage. He went into to the door, and all the kids ran up and wanted to play with him. Uh, but there was this one little sweetheart against the wall because she had attachment disorder. She wouldn't. And Stephen was so moved by that, he wrote a song. It's on his um, CD, All Things New. It's called What Now? And it's dedicated to Orly, and it says, I saw the face of Jesus in a little orphan girl. She was standing in the corner on the other side of the world. And I heard the voice of Jesus gently whisper to my heart, you said you wanted to find me. Well, here I am, and there you are, so what now? What will you do with this treasure you found? Wow. And so um, we ended up uh, moving out in faith again to adopt Orly. So tell us how Orly's doing now. How old Orly, is she? Um, Orly just had her birthday a couple days ago, and she's 11 now. She's 11. And she is beautiful. I mean, uh, she's a little China doll. And so now how does she get along with Levi? Le Orly, from the very beginning, was the mother hen of the orphanage. Oh. You know, she wanted to take care of all the orphans. She loves to cook with me, to clean with me. And so, so what about the spina bifida? Explain for the audience. Well, spina bifida is where the, um, uh, on your spine, the nerve sac is outside of the body. Right. And so it's a pretty sig serious uh, illness. Hers was surgically repaired before she came into our household. But sometimes with spina bifida, you need a second surgery, and she just had a second surgery in Shanghai uh, about six months ago. And so what is her prognosis for the future? Um, you know, she's perfect. Uh, she will never win any races, you know. She kind of runs like a car going down the freeway in third gear, you know. <laughs> but, um, you know, she's sweet. I talked to her, her teacher at school, and she said, Orly is so sweet that when there's a race at, in, at school in PE, all the other girls will slow down and run with her. Aww. And I told Orly that one time and she had no idea. Oh, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> she thought she was as fast as the rest <laughs> yeah. of them. She was I love sweet. it. I love yeah. that. Well, we have to take a short break. Stay right where you are. We'll be right back. Well, not everyone is called to move to a foreign land and start an orphanage, but each of us have moments where we can put aside our needs for others and when we do the reward will be great and you know John I really sense that there are people watching today who you can relate to John's story in that you know there's more that God has for you to do there's something that he's put in your heart and you've been afraid to step out and today was meant just for you to give you courage and faith to step out of the box and to remember that this life is, is just a stepping stone to the life to come and there is such contentment and peace in fulfilling what God has called you to do and now I didn't say it was going to be easy and we no. that's another whole program we can do right. sometime but um, it's not it's not going to be easy but but it's going to be rewarding mm -hmm. And there's going to be such peace and joy associated with it. What about that? Well, it, you're, you hit it on the head. Um, it is beautiful and passionate and painful and devastating all together at the same time. Mm -hmm. You know, the scripture says that Jesus was a man of many sorrows. Yes. So his life wasn't easy. My life is not easy. Um, but I wouldn't trade it for any other life in the world. Because you know that you're doing what you're supposed to be exactly. doing. Exactly. Well, I, I want to encourage those of you that are listening today, also those of you in the audience as well, you may think, well, you know, I'm, I'm this age or, you know, I'm established in my job and, you know, I can't imagine that I could go and do this or that or the other, but it's never too late to begin, is it? No. In fact, uh, some of the most famous missionaries, God did not call them to the field until very late in life. Moses would be an example of that. That's true. Colonel Sanders, you know, <laughs> there you he didn't go. come up with that fried <laughs> that chicken until, recipe. that's right, the recipe until, but um, really, you know, I, I know we laugh about that, but I just want to encourage you to, I really sense that so strong that there's someone watching, you know, who you are, and so you just, you, you move forward and just say, okay, Lord, I'm ready, let's do it, and he'll make a way, he will provide a way, and just like he's done for John, John, thank you so much. Thank you. For sharing your story today. Well, you know, the Bentleys went to China with no support. 
nothing but faith in God would make a way. And there are sick children, children that are alone. There are children in China that will die without help from people like John and his family. So today I want you to go to their website. You may want to get a copy of Saving Levi for Yourself. It's a wonderful story. And do what you can do to make a difference 